So the iPad Pro has gone through a very nice evolution as of late. In iPadOS 16, we got extended monitor support for some iPad Pros, as well as the new Stage Manager multitasking for some other iPads in the lineup. But with iPadOS 17, Apple, yes, they announced some new features, but a lot of it is all these quality of life improvements that went under the radar that Apple really didn't talk about. And some of these things you notice in the settings, some of them you notice it as you use it day by day, but Stage Manager and especially extended monitor support has gotten better and better. So in this video, I want to walk everybody through everything we have so far with Stage Manager. I'm going to talk about which iPads can actually use it, how to use it, how to get it going, what accessories you need, if any, now at this point, because iPadOS 17 finally gave us a workaround that we had to deal with from before. But without further ado, let's talk about Stage Manager and Extended Monitor Support from beginning to end on iPadOS 17. Let's get into it. Okay, everybody, so just to give some context, I am using an M1 iPad Pro for this setup, and this is the baseline model with no data. And I did wanna mention that in order to use Stage Manager, which is what we're gonna get into to begin with, you need an M series powered iPad. So that is the M1 or M2 iPad Pro in either the 11 or the 12.9 inch. You can also do it with the M1 iPad Air, which would be your cheapest entry point unless you find yourself a 2018 or a 2020 iPad Pro. So the A12X or the A12Z version of the iPad Pro will allow you to run Stage Manager. So Stage Manager is just what you get on the actual screen. And then when I refer to Stage Manager, I'm referring to this situation here where you can actually open these floating windows, but it's gonna be on device only. For extended monitor support, which is what we're gonna get into in the second half of this video, you do still need that M-powered iPad. So those M-powered M1 iPad Pro, M2 iPad Pro, and M1 iPad Air. Just wanted to get that clear. If you have any other iPad, unfortunately, you do not get this feature. So I do actually wanna get us started in the actual settings menu. So if you go into your settings and go to multitasking and gestures, this is a brand new menu that was brought over to iPadOS 17. And again, I'm using this on device on the iPad. So you do have a couple options when it comes to multitasking, right? You can actually completely turn it off. You have the split view and the slide over, which is a more traditional version of multitasking. So if I go and click on that, and then let's say I wanna open up Safari, open up a second window of Safari, I can now do that side by side. And if I wanna even open another slide over window, so let's say I wanna open up a third Safari, I can bring this over to the middle and now I have three versions of Safari. We've had this version of multitasking for a couple years now, so that should be the most familiar to everybody. And then if we go back into the settings and hit on stage manager, that's where things start to change up a little bit. So you see that we now get two other options that are brought up. You have your recent app and your dock. So basically what these two toggles do, it allows you to see exactly if you have your bottom dock and your left hand side kind of like most recently used app. So I'm gonna turn it on just to show you guys what it actually looks like. Scroll up, so if I open up, let's say Safari, that shows, so this is the actual Safari window, the slide over from before, and you can see that the dock is right here and then also my most used or my recently used applications. So if I go back into my settings and turn those off, you actually get a bigger, much bigger view. So if I open up Safari again, now the dock is gone, which you can still pull up with your finger like that. And then you can also pull up your slide over with your finger as well. But if you wanna be able to use the entire screen or encompass the entire screen, then this is the way to go to get the most screen real estate when it comes to using Stage Manager. So if I go to 9to5.com, you can see that I am able to then move it and kind of take up the entire screen if I want to. And there's some other options in the settings down here. So you have your start PIP automatically. So if, if there is an application that supports picture in picture, that'll happen automatically. You have your productivity gesture. So double tap with three fingers to undo, which I actually use a lot and that's system wide. So if, again, this is really multitasking, more gesture based controls. So let's say you're in this notes application and I wanna start to write something out. I can start to type, but then I can actually just press on the three fingers. Then you have a system wide menu that shows up which is undo, cut, copy, paste, and redo. And this can be done on any application. So I've, I've actually used this a ton in like Safari, I've used it with other applications, and it works extremely well. That is a gesture that Apple lets you turn on. Then you have your four and five finger gestures, so switch between applications like so, which does get treated a little bit differently when it goes from stage manager to not stage manager. But you can see that you can just keep flipping between applications over and over and over. And then you have your shake to undo and your swipe finger from the corner. The swipe finger from the corner is so you can actually either minimize as well as bringing up things like the quick note and be able to take an actual screenshot with your finger and not just the Apple Pencil. But that is multitasking when it comes to the new settings application. I just wanted to bring this to light because this is a new interface. And then when it comes to actual stage manager, Stage Manager is actually becoming much more functional in, in my use cases, right? First off, you have way more predetermined windows. When iPadOS 16 first came out, you only had about five to seven different kind of predetermined sizes. So yes, before you could still make it at whatever size you want, but there was limitations. Now there's actually, I believe up to 50 now different sizes. So you can see that it's not completely free flowing. So it's not an infinite kind of situation, but 
you can see that as I'm moving it, it's going into like these different kind of situations. So now you're kind of like an iPhone app size. Now you're an iPad app size and you can keep going and you can see that there's almost maybe like a staggering or a stagnation in between each one in a good way. It lets you pick pretty much any size window that you want. And it can go as full as full screen if I want to. Then I can also press the three dots up here and enter into full screen mode. So I'm able to do that to go to the actual website and then to make it smaller, I just do one of these and I can keep going. And then some things that haven't changed are you can actually have up to four applications open at once. So I'm able to do that. I'll have maybe something like this window open. I can actually move this around. Another thing that's new when it comes to quality of life improvement is that now you can put the floating windows pretty much anywhere. Before, Apple would kind of manually center the actual window so you couldn't really move it around. You had to kind of play some you know, window gymnastics. But now if I make this smaller and I wanna bring this over here, it's gonna stay here. If I wanna grab this and bring it over there, it's gonna stay there versus kind of like coming back with like inertia back into the middle, which is what used to happen. So again, more customization, easier to use, more familiar to people coming from a desktop situation. So Stage Manager is in my opinion getting much better. And again, you get up to four different windows like I mentioned earlier. And then not only that, but you can multitask with four, but then you can also have four instances more. So technically you can actually have up to 20 different applications open at the same time and then go back to them whenever you really need to. And again, it moves very quickly. And if I wanna grab maybe one of these and move it into another situation, I can do that. So now they're both open on this side. So again, Stage Manager is getting much better on device. And like I mentioned, it's getting more and more visibility and awareness because there's more iPads that can actually take advantage of it. So if you find yourself, you know, refurbished 2018 iPad Pro, then I say run with it because that'll be the cheapest way to be able to use something like Stage Manager. And the last thing I will mention about Stage Manager is that it, there is a shortcut up here in your settings menu or in your control panel, which I do recommend putting in there because you are able to then long press and be able to kind of manipulate it a little bit so I can turn this off and on turn off stage manager if I want to directly from your control panel without having to go into your settings. So that is stage manager on device. Now let's get into extended monitor support. Okay, so now let's get into extended monitor support. Now I have this Thunderbolt cable that's connected directly to my Philips 27 inch monitor right there. And the first thing I'm gonna show you before I actually show you what's going on is that before with iPadOS 16 and even with some versions of iPadOS 17 beta, if you were to connect your iPad Pro without any peripherals, so no magic keyboard, you know, no Bluetooth mouse, then if you would plug in the, I the iPad right here, which I'm doing right now, give it a second, it is charging, and then we should get a little drop down that says stage manager turned off, we are just gonna get a mirror display. So I'm gonna put up some B-roll of what it looks like. So as you can see, the display is just being mirrored on there. And again, that was the case unless you connected an auxiliary device like a keyboard or like a mouse, or again, like the Magic Keyboard that you can buy for $300 or $350, depending on when you see this. But now if we go back into those same settings menus, so if we go into our settings, go into multitasking and gestures, we now have a brand new option up here on the top of the screen. So you can see that it now has an external display option, which is was not there when this was not plugged in. So if I click on that, we now have a couple options here. So we still have these same options down here, but now we have the ability to just turn on stage manager with either screen mirroring or turn on stage manager on that extended monitor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this and show you guys what it looks like. So again, as you can see, the iPad is still not on any sort of, you know, keyboard or display or anything like that or any devices are connected to it. But if I just click on stage manager, it's gonna give you a nice little reboot. And you can see that we now have stage manager running on that extended monitor. Now you do need to actually have a keyboard and mouse connected to control anything on that. So let's turn on this mouse right here. So I just turned on my mouse and then you can see that with that mouse, I'm able to actually control everything. So if I go over here and I you know, open up Safari, everything or opens as it should be. And now I'm able to use the extended monitor support without needing to go out and buy an expensive magic keyboard or without needing to have any sort of docking station. Literally just have a mouse and you can control everything on the extended monitor via the mouse itself. And I love that because it gives you a little bit more flexibility before you needed to be in a certain situation with these accessories to be able to use that extended monitor support. So some other settings that I do wanna kinda of show off here. So we have our two options here with Stage Manager. And then what you wanna do is go to Display and Brightness. So this is the other section that you should know about, which is the arrangement of how we're actually using the display in comparison or in relativity to where the iPad is. So iPad is down kind of in front of me. This actual Philips monitor is above it. So that's why whenever I can scroll down, it's gonna to go to my iPad and then vice versa, it's gonna go back onto the screen right here. But that is what it looks like when it comes to extended monitor support. And again, you can bring up certain things. So if I go to my external display, turn on the dock so the dock does open up. You have your sidebar here. You know, if I wanna open up another Safari window, I can do that. 
and then you have the ability to just use Safari. Now, another thing to mention is that you cannot use your virtual keyboard on here. So when it comes to the virtual keyboard, you do need to have an actual physical keyboard Bluetooth connected to it to be able to use the actual, you know, secondary screen up here. I do wish that Apple allowed us to maybe pull up the virtual keyboard from here and then be able to use it that way. But hey, you know, one win at a time when it comes to being able to use this. So now some final limitations to take into consideration, which I know Apple likes to kind of keep things contained and how they want to do things. But firstly, when it comes to audio, we are still not able to use our iPad Pro as the main source of audio when connected via Thunderbolt or via pretty much anything. So again, you can use HDMI, DisplayPort. If you have the right dongle, it's going to work the exact same. But when it comes to audio, no matter what you do, you cannot get the audio to play from the actual device itself. So even if I go into the actual control center, click on something like here, you cannot choose to have the audio come out of your iPad speakers, which is very unfortunate because, you know, these iPad speakers are amazing in their own right. The next thing I do wanna mention is that there is still no real clamshell mode. Now I did have a little hack before, which you can actually, you know, put this into your actual Magic Keyboard and then make sure that it doesn't auto lock when you close it. But the moment that you lock it, it will turn off that display up, up top. So that's something to consider, but I can't open it up. It does even give you a different kind of home screen or lock screen. Then you swipe up and everything already populates, which is nice. But keep in mind that there is no quote unquote clamshell mode with this iPad Pro. But that will just about do it, everybody. Let's finish up this video. So that will just about do it for this video, everybody. Like I mentioned, iPad OS has evolved since it first came out and it was separated from iOS with iPad OS 13. And it's starting to, you know, mature into its actual form. It's a little bit of iOS, it's a little bit of Mac OS, but at the end of the day, it's its own operating system and it doesn't seem like Apple's gonna mesh the two. If anything, all three, so iOS, Mac OS, and iPad OS are starting to look more and more similar, especially with the new update to Mac OS Sonoma, where, you know, now we have widgets on the home screen, the apps are looking more like iPhone and iOS-like, so so I think there is going to be some, you know, some main merge in between all three of them at some point. We're still a couple years away, but I do think that iPad OS 17 really gets us to the point where the iPad Pro especially can now be your full on computer. If you have your workflow down, if you know what apps to use, if you are happy and with the versatility that the iPad provides with some of the smaller limitations that it doesn't have as a traditional desktop OS, then the iPad Pro could be your one and only computer that you need. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive than let's say an M1 MacBook Air or even an M2 MacBook Air, but once you have the right workflow and the right setup, you know, it, it's hard to go back to what Mac OS and a traditional kind of laptop or desktop solution can give you because the iPad Pro is just that versatile in my opinion. But let me know in the comment down below what you think of this video. What do you think about the iPad Pro being your main computer? Have you noticed some of these improvements with stage manager and extended monitor support with the iPad? All questions that I'm curious to find out, so leave a comment down below. And if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin as well so I know you made it to the end. And definitely stay subscribed because we got some more videos coming on iOS, macOS, and iPadOS, as well as some more long-term reviews on the iPhone 15, 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, and everything that comes with that. But that's going to do it, everybody. I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace. Be on the lookout for some YouTube shorts coming from the channel as well.